Welcome everyone, Jacob Hess here, your instructor and mentor. And in today's lesson, we'll be discussing IT career paths and the best way to make the most lucrative path that you can in IT. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at our agenda. We'll start out by discussing different IT roles. We won't talk about every IT role available, but we will discuss the most important ones and the ones that will probably be of the most interest to you. We'll then jump into enterprise networking as a realm of expertise. It's actually the place that you should start, and we'll discuss that in a little detail. We'll then jump into different specializations that you can venture into after getting good in enterprise networking. And then we'll discuss some different roles according to the specialist categories. We'll then look at some different companies that you can actually work for as an IT operations person or an IT engineer in general. Then we'll look at how you can be successful in your IT career, basically how to get started with this kind of stuff and how to make sure that you're actually marketable and you can get a job. And then we'll wrap it up by just letting you know that we've got you covered and that will be our lesson for today. So let's get started with roles in IT. So there's a lot of roles in IT, right? But I'm going to start out by discussing some different IT engineering and operations roles. Your most entry level role that there is, is the desktop support or help desk technician. I just put desktop support here because this role can have a lot of different names. Now, in our programs and things, we generally don't want people to start out here because you don't have to start out in desktop support. You don't have to start out on the help desk. We want people to start out in networking if they can. However, if you can't, the desktop support or help desk role is still an entry level place where you can break into IT and then work up to more advanced roles. So we have more advanced roles from there like network support, then you can look at server administration. We'll focus in the networking realm though in our trainings. Network administrator, network engineer, systems engineer, moving on up to the more advanced roles like network architect and solutions architect. And then if you're in the realm of consulting, you even have things like consulting engineer. Now these job titles will be dispersed across various different forms of IT. Whether you're working for like a manufacturer or you're working for any company, you'll have similar roles across these different organizations. These are just some of the different names of roles that you'll find. And again, there's many, many more, but these are some of the most interesting ones. We also have software development. Now we are specializing in networking here. Uh, and the reason why I have this here is because yes, yeah, software and developer roles are IT roles, but the DevOps engineer role is a hybrid role and I w really wanted to mention that because DevOps is kind of something that's new. You're the network engineer between the software team and the network infrastructure and you're understanding software and networking combined. And this is becoming more and more of a role that people want and it is a very lucrative role. It is more advanced though. You do need to know some networking and you do need to know some software development. There's also software engineers, front end and back end software engineers. Uh, those are also IT related roles. We won't focus on those in our training as we're more infrastructure and networking focused and we know that that's the best way to carve the most lucrative path is to start out in networking no matter what you're going to do. Of course there are also management roles. So we have IT management. You could be a project manager, for example, just managing IT projects. You could also be an IT manager over a network team or maybe over a server team or maybe managing a data center. Or you can be an IT director. Maybe you work for a company and you're managing an entire IT department or a portion of that IT department. You can also be a VP of IT, usually the IT director and everybody reports up to the VP of IT or a VP of engineering. And then the CIO or the chief information officer is going to be over all of it. The CIO in a more software-based company it will be more of a software role or someone who understands software a little bit more heavily. In an IT operations or IT department kind of role, the CIO is going to be very versed in server infrastructure and even a little bit of software stuff. So it depends on where you're working as to what the roles require. And again, there's a lot more roles than this and they do vary, but this should help you understand a little bit better what different roles you can actually look at getting into. Now the management roles are going to be a little bit more senior, right? Except for the project manager. The project manager role, you can just get like a project management certification and then you can jump into managing projects. I just listed it here under IT management to help you understand that it's not a technical role, it is more of a management role and it is something that's available to us if we want to go that path. And we need to wrap up this section with just stating again, the most options for a great career begin with network engineering. And you'll see why here in a second. Let's go ahead and break that down. And starting with enterprise networking. So with enterprise networking, what does that actually entail? Well, it entails the core of your network. 
all the systems that allow your main primary communications to traverse from one place to another. And that's things like routing, switching, wireless, voice over IP, and security. This is the core of any network, and this is what enterprise networking is. Meaning if you master these skills, or if you just get entry level basics of these skills, you'll still be a value to any organization. Because all organizations have a network infrastructure that includes routing, switching, wireless, some phones, usually everybody is now on voice over IP almost, and then security, right? We have to secure the perimeter of our networks. So you need to understand all of these things, and this is why actually our full stack network engineer program contains all of these things because these are the things you need to know in order to be effective in the workplace. It used to be you could just specialize in like routing and switching and then you'd be okay. But these days it's not that way. You need to understand more of a full stack of the networking technologies in order to be of value. And what do some of these roles actually look like whenever we're looking at enterprise networking? Well, it's gonna be a lot of the roles we already discussed. It'll be things like network support for an entry level, or network administrator for an entry associate level kind of job, network engineer for a more professional or advanced kind of job, systems engineer, network architect for a very advanced type of job, solutions architect, and, and consulting engineer. So whether or not you're working for a, just any company and working in IT operations, or you're work, working for a consulting company where you're designing and deploying large networks for other companies, all of these skills come into play, and if you master them, you'll be very valuable. Or, like I said before, if you even just learn the basics, you can get yourself into the door, and you'll be effective in that organization, and you'll be able to grow after that. Now, we have some actually photos here. We can look at some different people doing these jobs. I just think it's cool to kind of show this stuff. Here we have a, a girl, you know, working in the data center. She's actually working on a 6500 series switch there. That would be like a network engineer, right? These are the people who design and configure, maintain your networks, all of the infrastructure. Here's some, somebody working on some Cisco switches here, some small, smaller access switches. We have also a guy in the data center troubleshooting something, figuring something out. These are just examples of the types of things you might be doing in enterprise networking. Now, we also have design that's associated with this, right? Especially if you're in the consulting realm, you'll be doing a lot of design. You'll be designing and deploying and configuring networks for customers. But you may also be doing design working in an IT operations environment in just an IT department. So design is something that comes along with it. And these are the people, again, who design, architect, maintain, and support our networks. All of the systems that run our organization's communication, our routers, our switches, our wireless, our voice over IP, and our security. This is enterprise networking. And these days also we do have network programmability and a little bit of coding that helps. Things like Python help too as well. Anyways, this is enterprise networking and from here we set our base and from here we can branch out and specialize into even more lucrative positions. Or we can specialize in more in enterprise networking, learning it even better. And enterprise networking itself can be very, very lucrative for anyone. So you could stay a full stack network engineer for your whole life if you wanted, or you could branch out. But this is the place to start. That's the point. So let's look at some specializations now, because we discussed enterprise networking, and that can branch out into all kinds of stuff. So from here, we will specialize, right? We could specialize further in routing and switching, or we could go into security. We could go in also into cybersecurity. We could specialize in data center stuff, looking at data center switches and storage networking environments. We could get into collaboration where we specialize more in voice over IP and video over IP technologies. We could specialize more in wireless, become a wireless expert and be really good at deploying large wireless networks. Like let's say at some type of festival or something, there's a lot of wireless access at those things or a baseball game or anything like that, right? Or it could be even smaller scale. Just trying to give you something to think about. We also have DevOps, which is, again, the cross between networking and software and the person who is responsible for making sure it's a seamless connection between the software environment and the main network infrastructure and supporting all of that. That's a DevOps type of specialization. And then we have service provider. Service provider is here because there are some special technologies or certain things you need to know in order to work in a service provider environment, uh, but mainly it does deal with routing and switching and the core technologies too. I just listed it here because it is an area where we can also specialize. So those are some specializations that we can, well, specialize in. All right, let's look at some different roles associated with these specializations. So here we have all the different specializations we just looked at, and here we have some different roles that we can uh, associate with these specializations. Now these are not all the different roles that will be associated. These are just examples to give you an idea. 
So if you specialize in route switch, for example, you're going to be more of a network or systems engineer. You're going to be maintaining the LAN and the WAN. So your title will be something like network engineer, systems engineer, associate network engineer, senior network engineer, things like that. If you specialize in the security space, you're going to be a network security engineer or cybersecurity engineer, or maybe even a cybersecurity analyst. That would be a more entry cybersecurity level role. Uh, but network security is a big deal, and there's lots of roles associated with it. Moving on to data center, we'll have a data center engineer, or maybe someone specialized in the storage aspect of that, and maybe they're a storage engineer. Maybe we have uh, a voice engineer. That's along the collaboration specialization. Someone who specializes in rolling out voice over IP and phones. It does get very complex in that realm. So that is a very technical specialization that can earn you decent money. It can be lucrative for sure. Then wireless, right? Wireless engineer, pretty simple. DevOps, DevOps engineer, something like that. And in the service provider space, you'll have actually your normal network engineer types of job titles, such as systems engineer, maybe even just network engineer, maybe also network architect or solutions architect working for a service provider. All right, so those are our specialist roles, some of the more common ones you might see or hear about and very interesting ones. Now let's go ahead and move on to different companies that you can actually work for with any of these types of skills. Any of these roles that we just talked about, from enterprise networking all the way through all the specializations, you can work for just about any company there is. So any business, any corporation, or even the government, such as the Department of Defense, right? You can work for the military. You can work for any corporation or any business. Coca-Cola, for example, you can go work for Google. Like all these different businesses, corporations, and government are places you can work as an IT operations engineer or network engineer or any of those specializations. However, there are other places that we need to understand in the environment of the IT ecosystem because these are other places you can work at too. Now they are actually businesses and corporations, but I want to specify them. So here specifically we have a manufacturer. This would be a company like Cisco Systems or Arista Networks or Dell EMC or even Microsoft. I guess it could be Google too. It could be any of these type of, of manufacturers who create a service or a product that is installed into these businesses, corporations, and governments. So the whole point here is that if you work directly for a business, like Coca-Cola, for example, you might work on their IT operations team. You might work in the IT department. Now that IT department is going to need to upgrade their network, install new network stuff, and they're going to buy these items from these manufacturers, right? They're going to be installing things like Cisco switches and Cisco routers. They might be installing Dell EMC or NetApp storage systems. They may be installing Arista data center switches or maybe even Cisco Nexus data center switches. There's all these different manufacturers, even Microsoft, right? These are all manufacturers that contribute to this ecosystem and you can go work for any of them as well. Now, a lot of times you need to have a little bit of experience in order to go work for a manufacturer, but there are some entry level roles too. They're just a little bit fewer. Most of the time when people get started out, they start out in just a business or a corporation or the government, and those are great places to start. But if you get the opportunity to work at a manufacturer, hey, that's great too. You can also work at a value added reseller or a managed service provider. These are great places to start as well if you can get your foot in the door there. Now, I would look more for working at a value added reseller because you're going to learn a lot. You're going to do a lot of projects. You're going to have a lot of customers. And basically what you're doing at a value added reseller is installing the manufacturer's gear, the manufacturer equipment and services. You're installing that into a business corporation environment, right? You're going to install that for your customer since you're a consultant. You're working for a value added reseller as they call it. But these are the consultants. So why is it called a value added reseller? Well, they resell the manufacturer's equipment to the business, then they add additional value by providing professional services, which is the installation of that equipment into that environment. So that's a VAR as they call it. These will be like your Cisco partners. Some of the largest ones in the world here, we have like worldwide technology, we have Dimension Data. I also used to work for TechLinks, not the largest in the world, but a great company who is a VAR, and also they have an MSP arm as well. So these are included together because a lot of times your VAR is also going to have an MSP type of service associated with it, but they can be separate companies. They don't have to be the same company. So you can go work for them. Again, highly recommended if you can get into a VAR. And then you have your service provider. In the service provider space, you're gonna see a lot of big names that are a lot of times household names like AT&T or Verizon or Comcast. These are a lot of providers that people associate with phones like cell phones. Well, that is also a network service. 
and they also provide things like internet connectivity, right? That is a network service. They also provide things like high speed network connectivity, private network connectivity between locations and cities. So they can provide your business or corporation organization with a high speed data connection between two locations. And these are all different services that a service provider provide. And you need to specifically study how that environment works to go work there. But it's not that much different. It's still things like routing and switching, but there are certain protocols that you need to know in order to be effective in those environments. So these are the different companies to work for. And what does this tell you? This tells you that you can basically go work for any company. Almost any company uh, will need an IT engineer of some sort. The bigger ones, of course, are going to have more lucrative pay and they're going to have more positions. Well, you can work for any company, like a gaming company or a bank or anything, right? So basically, the sky is the limit. You can go work anywhere, but it's very important to understand this ecosystem and the different types of companies you can go work for. All right, so that wraps that up. And we can just go ahead and quickly look at how you can be successful in this, right? So how can you work toward a lucrative career in IT? Well, we can state it very simply, but it's a little bit more difficult to implement on your own. But very simply, this is how you do it. You learn networking and IT concepts. No, you do not have to go to college. You just learn networking and IT concepts. For example, routing, switching, wireless, etc. There's so many more types of concepts to cover, but these are just a few examples, right? And then learn actual skills that are needed. So, for example, if you're going into an environment that has Cisco equipment, you're going to want to know Cisco IOS. But Cisco IOS is something that's, that's spread across you know, the entire world, basically. Cisco systems equipment is everywhere. So you're pretty good starting out with just learning Cisco IOS because most environments have it. And it's also a great place to start because they have things like Cisco Packet Tracer that can help you with learning these concepts and skills in a technical mock-up environment. So you need to learn actual skills that are needed. Of course, there's a lots of other manufacturers, but these skills are related to manufacturer equipment, right? You need to know how to configure and set up equipment from these manufacturers. Cisco Systems is one. We also have like Juniper Networks and Arista Networks. We also have VMware. So it's good to learn things like virtualization. It's good to learn things like network programmability and a little bit of Python for coding so you can understand how to automate network tasks and functions. And then network design as well is an important concept or skill that, that will help you and help you be able to create a lucrative career. So understanding how all the parts and pieces fit together, how to diagram it all out and how to present it. That's network design, folks. All right, so next we will look at earning certifications in our skill areas after we have actually learned actual skills. So that's the whole thing. We don't want to jump right into certifications. We want to learn some skills first and then start working on certifications around those skills. That is going to produce a much better result than if you just try to get the certification right away. And that's the approach that we take in our programs at Zero to Engineer. So some skill areas would be like routing and switching, enterprise networking, things like that, right? So you have your CCNAs and your CCMPs. For VMware, you have your VCP. For Juniper, you have your JNCIA for their associate level cert. And I added in the certified ethical hacker, the CEH, for more of a cybersecurity related type of certification, if that's where you're trying to go. But generally, you start out in enterprise networking, right? And then you would branch out into things like cyber. I just included that so you understand you can get that cert too if you want in the beginning. It's up to you. And then gain experience and do projects. Well, how do you do that? Well, you can volunteer in things or you can get some type of base entry level job or maybe you already work somewhere and they have an IT department and they will allow you to volunteer to do projects with them. There's many different ways you can gain experience and do projects. However, it's not mandatory to have that. It just really helps. And as part of our programs, we usually have a project associated with our tech degree or with our program. For, so in our full stack network engineer program, for example, we have a full stack networking project where you build out a HQ and two branch offices, interconnect them, and you build out all the, all the routing, the switching, the wireless, the voice over IP, and the security, right? So that's enterprise networking at its finest. We build all that out in one giant project. So that's one way to kind of gain experience, even though it's virtualized and it's through uh, practice, practice items like Packet Tracer, for example, Cisco Packet Tracer. There's all kinds of other things you can practice on and create many virtualized projects on. So even if it's not a project that you do on a real active network, you can still get project experience by doing project training. And you can also, of course, 
again, go volunteer at places to gain some real experience. And if it's entry level, if you're trying to get into an entry level job, break your way into IT, even things as simple as just racking and stacking routers or helping people move their computers into a new branch installation, these are all things that someone could do in order to get experience. And a lot of our students actually do just that. And then lastly, once you land your entry level job, you don't need to stagnate. As soon as you land that job, you keep on learning, right? So land your entry level or associate job and then grow as much as you can. So grow as much as you can and as fast as you can. That means learning more technologies, getting better at what you already know and getting more certifications and making yourself more marketable. And you can skyrocket your career if you really grow uh, in a manner like that. If you always think about that, if you have a growth mindset, as soon as you hit the, as soon as you hit the ground running at your initial organization, have that growth mindset, and you'll soon be on your way to actually breaking six figures. Many of these roles that I mentioned, most of them are based around six figure salaries. Entry level roles won't be so much, right? But you can quickly make your way into that six figure realm or somewhere near that if you have a growth mindset. So that's how you can be successful. And lastly, I just want to wrap all this up with just reminding everyone or telling you if, the fir if this is the first time you've heard of us, uh, that we have you covered at NextGen. We have you covered and with our zero to engineer programs, we've already got everything laid out for you. So we discuss all the different types of careers. We give you the skills that you need and, and help you learn all the networking concepts and then point you in the right, right direction as to where you should actually go and help you with your career and actually finding a job that will be good for you. So we've got you covered. And that wraps up the lesson, ladies and gents. We discussed roles in IT. We looked at enterprise networking as the base place that we want to start learning routing, switching, wireless, voice over IP and security. That is going to give you the best and fastest way to a lucrative career is starting there. We then discussed different specializations you can go to, like specializing in data center or specializing in security or specializing in wireless or collaboration in voice, all these different types of areas. Then we discussed different roles associated with those areas and we looked at different companies to work for. So remember, there is an, an environment here, an IT ecosystem that includes all the different companies in the world basically, and then these specific companies like manufacturers, value-added resellers and managed service providers, and then service providers themselves. So all of that creates the IT ecosystem and you can go work anywhere, anywhere in the world just about as an IT engineer. We then looked at how you can actually be successful and then wrapped it up with saying, hey, we've got you covered because how you be successful is by following our plan, right? We've already got it all laid out for you. So that wraps up the lesson, ladies and gents, on IT career paths. My name is Jacob Hess, your instructor and mentor, and I'll see you in the next video. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.